Hello Patriot and welcome back. So today I'm doing some load development for my Marlin 336, chambered in 3030 Winchester of course. This is going to be the first time that I've ever tried to work a load for a cast lead bullet in a rifle that's close to full power. Essentially I never bothered because I didn't want to deal with gas checks, but now that I'm powder coating, I figured I'd give it a shot. Please keep in mind that I'm not a reloading expert, and if you take any of my reloading components, double check them with manuals and online data so you can get verified resources. I've only been reloading for about four years, it's just kind of a side hobby, so my techniques are definitely not perfect. In fact, this is the first time I've ever tried to powder coat a batch of rifle bullets. They're not as uniform as I'd like them to be, but I figure if I can eventually get a two inch group at 100 yards with my 3030 on iron sights, I'll be happy. I'm sure that the accuracy degradation you see in the video, although not extreme, is mostly me and not the loads. For price and convenience, I decided to go with the Lee's 170 grain flat point. I've had good luck with Lee molds in the past and had no reason to doubt this one. I was also under the impression that this bullet was primarily designed to work in a lever gun. This may be the case, however, with my Marlin 336, which is fairly new, I think it's a 2013 model, I ran into some seating depth issues. The ogive on this particular bullet is damn near the plat. It's way up front. This causes the bullet to essentially engrave itself into the rifling quite a bit if you seat the bullet to its recommended depth. Another concern I had with seating the bullet this deep is you're well past the cantilever, making it more difficult but not impossible to crimp. This could be an issue under heavy recoil if you have an entire tubular magazine full of these rounds. You might run into some bullet setback issues, so definitely keep an eye on that. Here's the Lee's 170 grain bullet next to a Remington Corlock 170 grain. What I've noticed with all factory rounds that I've seen, and even pictures of the Lyman's version of this bullet, is that the ogives start basically right after the cantilever making it very easy to seat them to the proper depth. To prevent the bullet from pushing itself into the lands, or basically being impossible to chamber, I seated the bullet extra deep. This was a concern for me at first because the deeper you seat a bullet into its case, the more pressure you can build up in the case itself. So it's kind of a catch-22. If the bullet's too deep into the lands, you can have pressure, and if it's too deep into the cartridge, you can have pressure. Well, I was able to work up my max load to 22 grains without any pressure signs whatsoever. This is about one and a half grains below the recommended charge in the manual. So I was happy with that, but just something to keep in mind. Now this may or may not be necessary, but I decided to size these bullets down to 308 after I powder coated them. It's unusual to size a lead cast bullet to bore diameter because you have gas blow by and lead cutting, but I figured since we're powder coating I might as well see if that would be an issue. Also keep in mind that these bullets are designed to be gas checked and I'm not using a gas check. I really wanted to see how well this Harbor Freight Red powder coat would hold up. The other components I'm using for this charge are a CCI large rifle primer, non-magnum of course, IMR4198, and you may notice from the picture that this is very old powder for me. This was given to me by a friend, and according to him, it's about 30 years old, so this powder is almost as old as I am. And when was the last time you saw a pound of powder for less than $7? The cases are just a random mix, but they're mostly Winchester's PowerPoint cases. For load progression, I'm starting at 16 grains which is two grains less than is shown in my manual for a recommended starting load. I'm doing this for the obvious pressure concerns, and the fact that this powder is so old, I wasn't sure whether or not it would still be stable. I don't know how well powder keeps. This was kept in a cool, dark place, but you never know. It's very humid in Louisiana, so anything could happen. There's a little bit of rust on the outside of the container, so you never know. I didn't seem to have any issues or inconsistencies with the powder, but I'm not an expert. All I had to go off was sight and smell. I'm working my way up in half grain increments, um, two, two rounds each pretty much, and I'm going to stop at 22 grains as long as there's no pressure signs. That is one and a half grains below the maximum load in my manual. 
Originally this rifle was sighted in at 100 yards, and here we're shooting at 50, using Winchester's PowerPoint 150 grains. I did a test load at the end of the session, and you can see the point of impact for that 150 grain bullet was basically good on the elevation. And I noticed a considerable drop between the two bullets at 50 yards, even up to the maximum load. Just something to keep in mind. My point of aim is obviously the two inch orange dot, and it's set on top of printer paper to give you a size comparison. And although shooter error is obviously a concern when it comes to deviations, I noticed that the horizontal spread between 16 and 22 grains was not very much, about fist size. So that gives you an idea of the accuracy potential of this bullet. Now of course I examined all the primers as I fired them, and all the way up to my maximum load I didn't see any pressure signs in the cases or primers. At the end of the session I fired a factory load so I could compare its primers to my max load. Turns out the factory load was flattened out quite a bit more than my max load. This tells me if I really wanted to I could work up a more powerful load, but I'm not interested in that. I'm happy to note that the load I settled on, 21.5 grains, is well within safe margins, at least to my eyesight. I settled on the 21.5 grain load because it drops conveniently out of one of my dippers, consistently perfect every time. Now for the moment of truth. Cleaning at the end of the day to see if we had any leading. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with looking for leading, and I did fire that one jacketed factory round at the end of the session. It's possible if there was any, it might have well, cleaned it out of the barrel. But running several dry, wet, scrub patches through this and a boar snake, I couldn't find any flakes, slivers, or anything that showed leading or uh, powder coat fouling. I don't have the best eyesight, and it's hard to get a camera to focus down the barrel, but as you can see, it looks pretty clean. Of course, I'll have a follow-up video on this eventually, out at 100 yards with a batch of my settled on loads. If I run into any concerns, I'll definitely update the video. Hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Hope this gave you some relevant information if you decide to use this bullet Stay safe, and God bless. Are you knocking something loose down there? <laughs> One last thing, Patriots. If you've ever wanted to fly a speeder bike through the forest moon of Indoor, go check out my drone channel, LA Hover. I think you might like it. <laughs>